All right. Welcome back to another episode of the Real Estate Investing Club. Today we have Joe Moffat with us from uh, Idaho up here in the Pacific Northwest. Gotta love our Pacific Northwesterners. Surprisingly, we do not have a lot of us on the show, so I'm glad you're here to represent us, Joe. Um, Joe hey. is a uh, peak performance coach as well as a real estate investor, does all sorts of things, short-term rentals, self-storage, uh, limited partner development, and co-living. So there's a lot to go into on this episode. So Joe, thank you very much for hopping on. I appreciate you having me. Excited to be here. Absolutely. Um, I told you before we got on here, we like to start with stories. So why don't you take us to the beginning of your story? How'd you get started in real estate? Yeah. Um, I guess a little backstory real quick. I, I, once I graduated high school, I didn't know what I wanted to be. So I joined the United States Marine Corps, did five years in the Corps, traveled all around the world, did a tour over in Iraq, and then got involved in network marketing as soon as I got out. And that's where I started learning about personal development and just fell in love with it, learned that the more I help other people succeed, uh, the more that I would succeed. And so after a while, I became a professional coach. I started with Tony Robbins and uh, had a lot of fun there. And then I went on my own. My wife and I, we started our own company called Master Life by Design. And probably about three or four years ago, we started just naturally coaching people who were in the real estate space and you know they wanted passive income and they wanted to create financial freedom. And so we helped them and we started watching all of our clients create financial freedom through real estate. And we're like, we have passive income through our business and other means, but we're like, we shouldn't start investing ourselves. And so um, it was probably about three and a half years ago, we started investing and getting into the real estate game and, and really just playing the part instead of just coaching people around it. So um, it's probably about three years ago. Yeah. Right on, man. Yeah, I mean, there's only so much you can uh, you can watch these these big checks across the table and then be like, you know, these guys aren't any smarter than I am. I'm sure I can do this too. So um, that's exactly. awesome. Uh, so, so you got started in as a peak performance coach. Um, don't often have you guys on here, so it'll be interesting to hear what you what you say. Um, and then you got into real estate. When it came to the real estate side, how what was the first few acquisitions that you did? How did you actually get started in real estate? Yeah, so my the first thing was we we helped invest in a flipping company, a startup fl house flipping company. We did not know anything about flipping. Like, don't get me wrong, we knew in theory in our head, right? Like, it's great to consume knowledge, but the practicality is a lot different, right? And to actually go in and do a flip, and so we just thought, hey, we know someone that is has done it and done it many many times. So why don't we help them invest and get the ball rolling there? We can learn as we go. And so we first started that and we don't, we were pretty, we're pretty much hands off. We don't have to do anything. Right. Um, but then we're like, okay, now we got to get our feet wet. And that's where we went and got our first short-term rental. It's about two hours from us here in the Boise, Idaho area. We, uh, we got one in the mountains, which is it's great because we get to take our boys. We have a five-year-old and a three-year-old that we get to take up there when it's not getting rented out in this winter when there's like two feet, three feet of snow. They get to have that experience. And we get to teach our kids like this is an asset for our family. And they get to actually experience that. And so um, it's cool. My five-year-old already knows what an asset and a liability is. So um, <laughs> pretty cool. So that's it. that was like our very first is our short-term rental up there. Very cool. Yeah. Yeah. I, I feel like that's, um, I got started in wholesales and flips and, uh, I, I feel like a short-term rental is a good way to get started. And I wish I would have done that uh, myself because you can buy it in a place that you actually want to stay. Um, and so you really see it through the eyes of your customer. Uh, and then you get to, you have a place that you can actually use. Um, you can go out there and use it when, when you want. Um, yep. where'd you, where'd you guys end up buying that? Uh, it's in McCall, Idaho. Oh, okay. So kind of yeah. in, in your neck of the woods, you didn't venture off too About far. two hours. Yeah. Okay. Just enough. We just enough where we, uh, we won't make the drive all the time. If something wrong went, uh, went wrong up there. And, uh, if something's really bad, we got to go up there, then we will. Yeah. I feel like, uh, the two hour, two hour drive mark is the perfect distance for an investment because you can still get there, but you don't feel like you need to go out there every single day because, you know, you still have to make a two hour drive. Um, so I, you did good there. 
So once you did that, uh, that short-term rental, you started venturing out. It sounds like, um, you did not, it sounds like you did not just stay in one lane. You didn't stay with the short-term rental. You went to development and then to, it sounds like co-living. What made you decide to make that switch, um, and venture out into different, different strategies? Uh, great question. Um, I'm in a mastermind group called Go Abundance. I don't know if you've heard of it, but um, had some guys in there that I knew and uh, connected with. And actually, we became a partner in a self storage deal that they found. And so um, I have a good buddy out here, AJ Osborne, and I speak at his events. And um, and so I know a little bit about self storage, uh, but again, never took one down myself. So I was like, this is a perfect opportunity for me to dive in. And so we did that. And then we, yesterday, actually, we just closed on land. Um, oh, cool. We're, we're going to start developing uh, out there. And uh, it's about 45 minutes from us. So we're going to start doing some land development. And um, we what, are you guys, some- uh, what are you guys developing? Is it, is it residential or are you... Um- yeah. Is it self yeah. As well? Oh, it's residential. Yeah, residential. We're gonna we're building a we we think right now at this point we're gonna build a barn dominium to short term rental and then maybe even you're uh, building a barn dominium. So you're not tr- uh, converting a barn into a barn dominium, but you're building one. Yeah. Interesting. Okay. I just learned about barn dominiums probably about like three months ago, and yeah. a couple of my friends are actually building some. And I was like, I started looking on Instagram, and I was like, wow, these are pretty cool yeah. so um and it would be cool for our kids to have that experience it's more out in the country so a different pace of life because we're in the hustle and grind all day monday through friday so if we uh have an opening we'll be able to jump up there but we we're th- also thinking about since it's over two acres we can put a couple maybe tiny homes on there and short-term rental those out or it could be an office where we're up there still mapping it out but that's the game plan now because uh there's not much in that area and a lot of people are starting to venture out there so we want to be ahead of the curve or at least that's what we try to do so yeah we i there. love uh those concepts with the massive high ceilings and the you know the wide open spaces i've seen uh um old fire firehouses turned into uh turned into single family and i've seen you know barns turned into single family and i feel like those they end up being really crisp and clean looking um, houses that, you know, be a great short-term rental, uh, you know, long-term as well, but uh, it's a great concept. I I like that you guys are going with that. Pretty cool. Um, Awesome. So you're developing it. You, this is your first time going through it. How has it been for you? I know development, a lot of people, it just kind of, you know, they lose, they gain some gray hair, gray hairs and even lose some hair. Um, How's the experience been so far? So we had uh, we had our eye on two lots in this area, and um, we actually invited friends up the day after we went and looked at it. We went up there twice, me and my wife, and um, we're like, oh, man, we, we like both lots. We could see a lot of great things in both of them. And we were like, we invited two other families to come up and see if they want to kind of play in the game, too. And we're like, well, we got to pick our lot. And I got a crash course in about 12 hours on how to read schematics, land, talk about leach fields, septics, well, how far they got to be a part of secondary, you know, septics. And I'm just like, okay, I'm learning, I'm getting a crash course here. So, but it was great because that helped us identify, like if we were going to have to put a septic in a certain location where we wanted to put the house, we wouldn't be able to do that. And so uh, I got a quick crash course. So I'm learning um, not too much. My thing is this is the way I look at it. And I do a lot of mindset coaching for people, as I said, is you're never going to truly understand and learn until you actually do it. It's like trying to experience what it's like to raise children with, you just got to go do it. Right. And that's how I feel. A lot of times people get so caught up in learning and reading and trying to, what if this happens? And what if this happens? I'm all about mitigating risk, but I'm also like, Hey, you got to put your foot one foot in front of the other and take a step. And so um, we're getting a crash course, but it's fun. It's exciting. Yeah. The yeah. Bill comes in. The, <laughs> there's a lot of creativity when it comes to development. And so um, I'm sure you guys are really enjoying it. And I hundred percent agree. If you want to do something, you know, get some education, learn a little bit, but then just go out there and do it because there is no teacher like experience. Um, and you know, sometimes you will get hit in the face, but that's just, it's the name of the game. Uh, you got to take those, take those on the chin and keep walking forward. Absolutely. All right. So let's talk about this. Uh, the last, um, 
I do want to ask a little bit about your, your peak performance uh, uh, company that you got. But before we go into that, let's talk about the last strategy that you guys are doing, co-living. Uh, this is kind of a new concept. I, f- I mean, obviously, it's not a new concept. They've been doing this forever. But in terms of its own unique strategy, it's not something that really has been has. I feel like it's been g- gaining traction recently. So take us through the strategy. What made you decide that it was a good idea? And then how would you go about you know executing your first deal? Yeah, so... Uh, I told you guys I was part of Go Abundance and Mastermind there. And I, on my YouTube channel, Master Life by Design, what I do is I interview seven figure entrepreneurs that create passive income. And so I interviewed one of the guys in my master name, Mastermind. His name is Sam Weger, and he teaches co living. I never heard of it until I interviewed him. And after I interviewed him, I, I was like, this is a really unique strategy, especially in this market. If your primary focus is cash flow and you're not afraid of doing some work um, with rates as high as they are, it can work. And so I had, I shared it with my wife. I was like, babe, you got to watch this interview. And she watched it and she got fired up because she saw how, you know, you can look on the MLS and if you might have an off market deal brought to you, you know, if you're going to stick a renter in there, you might cash flow. $100, $200 $100, $200 a door. In some cases, you know, Brandon Turner talks about that a lot. Um, but we were like, man, we can cash flow two grand, 2,500 a month. Um, we just got to buy the deal right. And so um, we started jumping in. We actually made a uh, commitment with uh, my buddy, Sam. We do the peak performance coaching in his company and uh, we get to partake in their co-living strategies and learning and um partner with people and stuff like that and get educated. So we've been, uh, we've identified some markets. We're looking actually to do some off market uh, cold calls for off market deals um, because the things on the MLS are just a little tight right now until things start to shift. But um, yeah, it's exciting. We're, we're, we had one uh, that we thought, but it just uh, last minute things didn't pan out. So we're, we're back to getting after off market deals. Yeah. I mean, that's the, that's the name of the game in this, uh, this market. I feel like, um, you know, sellers still want that 3% interest, uh, price point, but, um, interest rates are a lot higher. So, uh, it's, it's really difficult to get the two expectations to align. Um, but you know, you, you gotta keep going at it. Um, so co-living, I mean, it really depends. The, the strategy only works out when you're really have the perfect location. What is your guys' strategy for finding that type of location? Are you just looking around, um, maybe hospitals, universities, uh, what, what are you looking for there? Great question. We're trying to remain within 30 to 40 minutes of like a major city, um, out a little bit because we're targeting young professionals, uh, that would love because in co-living, what we're doing is actually, we're adding more bedrooms to the house and maybe even an extra bath or two, depending on that, the house. Um, so you could have anywhere from eight to 12 rooms, depending on the size of the home. And so these are young professionals. They're, and you're renting they're out each individual room to, uh, to a renter. Yes, yes. We're renting out each one to a, a renter. Um, I got ex- exposed to something like this around colleges about a decade ago. I never took advantage. Now I'm kicking myself in the butt um, at a real estate conference I went to. But I was like, that's a brilliant move. But um, what we're doing with co-living is so much more detailed the way that they they run it. Pad splits out there. We a lot of people are listening. You probably heard of pad split, but they're taking 30, 35 percent versus where we're we're able to do five to maybe 10 percent max for property management on those. So I'll take that all day long. Nice man. Um, well, I hope you guys find a good one, uh, good one soon. And because uh, you know, once you get a good good strategy and you're excited about it, it is, uh, it's always disappointing when the deal doesn't just plop into your lap, but you know, that, that is real estate. Um, all right. So I'm going to move us on to the last, uh, well, before we go to the quick question, uh, round, I do want to ask about your peak performance coaching, uh, company. Uh, that is something that you guys, you and your wife, you said you guys started your company. Um, what is it that you guys do? And then what are the main thing, um, I guess, obstacles that you see investors specifically run into, uh, in, that they need to overcome to reach the goals that they're they're looking at. Yeah, great question. So uh, I love a quote that Tony Robbins says. He says everything is eighty percent psychology, twenty percent strategy, and that's where we focus is on the eighty percent because 
you know, I'm sure Gabe, you found that you find a great deal, you're raising capital and someone's like, they look at the numbers that you provide and they're like, this is a home run deal. And it's a no brainer to invest, but then they're afraid to let go and wire that hundred or 200 K. Well, why is that? What's happening up here? That's putting the emergency break on for you to not go forward with this because you're going to get some incredible returns or an investor who finds a great deal. They run the numbers and they're afraid to submit an LOI or put in an offer. Like, why is that? What is the reason where they're on the gas and the break at the same time? And that's where we focus is really unpacking that and peeling those layers back because what happens is we kind of put these, like if you're on a highway and you had a road barrier every 20 feet, you had to swerve left and right between them, you can, it's going to take you a while to get you to your destination. But if we can remove those barriers out of the way, you can accelerate to your end goal a lot faster. So many investors, they have these imaginary barriers in their mind that prevent them from actually accelerating to the path of financial freedom or whatever their goal is, but usually a lot are going after financial freedom. And so we help remove those mental roadblocks so that they can go a lot faster. And so um, it's fun when you get to work on people one-on-one, not work on, work with people one-on-one and see the breakthroughs and the ahas and the light bulbs go off for them. And then when they come back and they're like, hey, I appreciate that. I'm cash flowing $2,500 a month more now because of that deal. And it's like so cool to watch. So it's fun. Cool. I love it. All right, I'm going to take that opportunity and move us into the quick question round. Are you ready? Let's do it. Let's do it. It starts with education. Um, I need two recommendations. It could be any form of content, books, magazines, YouTube channels, whatever. Give me two of them. Um, one for general life wisdom and then one for real estate or business specific. Oh, uh, all right. For life, I have to go to Tony Tony Robbins. Um his unleash the power within event is uh is really powerful for those that are just trying to understand the psychology and how to overcome fears and all that i think that that really when i was starting my path to personal development it really unlocked a lot for me it shifted i could go into much detail but we don't have time um and so and then as far as as far as business um i will say a book that really helped me along my real estate investing is David Green's book, Long Distance Real Estate Investing. It just broke down the mental barriers for me that said, oh, I can only invest right where I am. Why can't I invest down, you know, five states over or across the country? Why not? You know, it's like when people, you know, invest in deals with you, you're doing the work for them more than likely, but you have this belief or beliefs about why you can invest at a distance and how you have your T's crossed and your I's dotted systems and all that. So uh, that book really broke a lot of paradigms for me. So it's, I recommend that. Cool. Yeah, that is a good recommendation. And it's the first one, first time that it's been recommended on this show. Um, so Very I cool. love, love to hear new things. So, uh, all right, moving on to the next question. And this is for your younger self. So let's go back to the Joe who had no <clears throat> experience in real estate. He was just getting out of the core, however many years ago. Go back to him, look him in the eye, give him one piece of advice moving forward. Find someone in the real estate world that I feel like aligns with my values and morals and tell them I would work for them for free for three months, a month, three months and prove myself. And, and in exchange, obviously, if I do a good job, I would ask him that person for a job and learn every facet of the business that I possibly could. Um, and I would just bust my butt for a couple of years and learning every area and then being able to take that on my own. And that if I would have done that 15 years ago, I'd be in a completely different place right now. Yeah. It's amazing how much, uh, you know, mentorship can get you so much farther down the road um, than just going it alone. Uh, you know, it's the way I wish that I'd, I'd gotten a mentor a lot earlier in my career. Um, so great advice, learning from somebody who actually knows what they're doing is uh, is invaluable. Um, I'm going to move us to the next question. And this is about the US. It is a big place, a lot of opportunity out there. Give me the single metro you're most excited about investing in today. It, it's a tough one. Uh, but it, I'll say the uh, Arizona area, um, like Phoenix area, only because we have a lot of boots on the ground there. And it's a short flight for us. And um, I see the growth there. I know it's kind of taking a little hit right now, but, uh, long-term, I feel like it's 
it, the uh, the ability to invest there is going to be worth it long term. People are still hitting home runs right now, but um, things are a little bit tighter now with the way rates are and everything. But yeah, that's that's where we're excited about. Yeah, I can't remember which guest it was, but somebody we had on this podcast earlier, um, they said that the Phoenix market is the market that has the biggest swings in um, in values. It it's like you know it goes way up, way down, way up, way down. Um, I thought that was kind of interesting. I don't know why that is, uh, but it you know that is what it is, which which can be good because it means there's more opportunities to buy low and sell high. So. Um, and everything's patterns. And if you can see the patterns and the swings, everything's cyclical. You can do that. That's you're never going to time the market, but if you're in it for the long run, and I teach a concept called an infinite mindset, you just learn as patterns and you're in it for the long game. And all of a sudden you can take advantage of it and win over the long period of time. So yeah. There you go. All right. Next question is about finding deals. It all starts with getting in contact with the seller. So what is your favorite way to generate leads and find good deals? I just made a video on this for my channel the other uh, yesterday. Uh, two, actually, two ways. One is networking. I'm I'm very outgoing. I'm very gargarious. I love talking to people. So the ability to network and reach out, find out how I can help other people, and let them know what I'm looking for, especially agents um, or even mailmen. Right, they're driving around looking at houses. Uh, but if we're at a distance here, cold calling is the biggest thing right now. Right, finding lists that. that uh, meet our criteria. And then um, we actually have a friend of ours who has a system where he could take a 5,000 person list and based on like 12 different metrics, he can siphon that down to maybe, I don't know, it varies, but four, 450 names where they know, you know, you're, they're going to pick up within one or two calls. Mm -hmm. And so you hit those 450 a lot faster. So, um, so those are the two ways for us. Oh well, yeah. Cold calling is, uh, is, you know, it's the tried and true always works. Um, definitely, you know, if you're doing it yourself, it takes a lot more time, but it, uh, it's a solid, solid strategy to go after. All right. Next question is about lessons learned. Not every deal goes the way that we expect it. Sometimes things come out of the right field and hit you in the face. Um, so what is the biggest lesson learned through a deal kind of gone sideways? Uh, make sure you have multiple exit strategies. And not just the one you think you're going to have, because like you said, things go sideways. Um, and so we caught ourselves uh, in a situation where we had one exit strategy and I could have thought that through more, but yeah. for whatever reason, I didn't. So yeah. no, that, that again, that is the, I feel like that's the first time somebody's answered it that way. And I feel like that is a very good response because um, I mean, let's give it an, an example. Say you buy, you underwrite a property as a short-term rental. And then for some reason, it doesn't pan out as a short-term rental. If in if you had the second exit strategy as long-term, you know, renting it out as a long-term, you can, uh, and it's still, you know, cash flowed, then you can just switch pivot, um, rent it out long-term and uh, and still make a little bit of money there. But you have to have that foresight going into it, um, thinking, you know, I'm going to hit a slam dunk as a short-term, but if that doesn't go the way that I want it, we still have the option of renting it out as a long-term. So love that, have different exit strategies, make sure that uh, there's multiple ways that you can make the deal win if uh, one one doesn't go your way. Yep. All right, and that leads us to the very last question. This is for the listeners. I'm sure people wanna reach out, get in contact with you, maybe learn a little bit more about your guys' peak performance um, program. So what is the best way for people to reach out and then what can they expect when they do? Yeah, you can reach out at masterlifebydesign.com. Uh, you can shoot us an email there, or you can check us out on YouTube at uh, Master Life by Design. So check it out there. And what they can expect is, uh, well, we help people create financial freedom through passive income and mindset. And so you guys are learning through Gabe right now, which is awesome. And stay plugged in here. And we like to bring the mindset into it. And so if people are interested in working with my wife or I one-on-one, -on -one, we're available. And we also have coaches on our team that work for us that uh, could be able to help you too. So there we go. Perfect. I love it. All right. And I will put that link in the show notes, masterlifebydesign.com. Um, all you got to do is just click a little more in the description. It'll pull down the full description in there. You can find Joe's link. All right, Joe, that wraps it up. Thank you very much for hopping on the show. Thanks for having me. Appreciate it. Absolutely. For everybody who's here with us today, thank you guys for showing up. You are the reason we do this. So if you guys have any questions whatsoever, 
reach out to me, Gabe, at the real estate investing club.com. And if you guys want to support the show, as always, just give us a like, subscribe, share all that jazz. Other than that, I hope you guys have a great week. Keep rocking real estate. And I look forward to seeing you on the next episode. Thank <laughs> you.